So CIPT's Leaders in Learning comes to Manchester tonight and the focus is very much around the emerging new skills and um, responsibilities within learning development and particularly looking at digital and uh, performance which of course are pretty much two of the major, major issues around learning development at the moment. Digital learning, learning tech, massive in terms of how we're using that to um, develop learning in the workplace, help be more um, responsive, agile, it's a huge area of development. And of course performance is absolutely the key. What's the point in doing any of this stuff unless we're in a position to say this is the impact and this is how it links to business strategy and objectives and this is how it's helping. So it's going to be a good evening I think. What happens in my, my business every day? Most of the problems are our own creation. But it's very unlikely that people coming to work for your organisation will be standard people. They need to be able to come to work every day to solve something that's never been solved before. This problem didn't exist before these structures came to play. To do that, your organisation's got to be learning. It's got to be learning through and through. So being a learning professional means we get to get out of this realm of the classroom person, the course person. We stop being a procurement function. Oh, I've got a problem, I'm going to go and buy some training. And we start to be a function that subtly influences everything that goes on in the organisation. Well, one of the challenges that we face in l and generally is that although we've improved immeasurably in terms of designing, developing and delivering formal learning solutions, as an organisation or as a profession, we're not terribly good at solving business problems and performance problems. So the challenge that we had at the Secondary 2010 Institute when we developed these roles was to think about ways in which we can help L&D departments move from focusing on learning to focusing on performance and from focusing on operational activities, which are important, but then to sort of move up and think about strategic issues in terms of how we work closely with our organisational strategy, with our senior organisational leaders and with our major... From my L&D team, I'd be looking at three specialist roles. I'd be looking at being an asset creator, somebody who can make videos like this one. I'd be looking at getting a curator, somebody who can organise content and conversations from both inside and outside the organisation and help people to tell stories with that content. And I'd be looking for a programmer. I'd want a developer. If we're going to be digital learners, we need to be digital first, and that means not just having somebody who knows a bit about computers somewhere. You need someone who lives and breathes technology. And for me, as someone who runs an R&D company in learning technology, I couldn't do what I do without a program. So what are my reflections on the evening? Well, Ben Betts and Charles Jennings, of course, talk a lot of sense. 
around the roles that they're talking about with learning development. Um, they're not mutually exclusive and you can really see how important those roles are. So with Charles Jennings, I like those five roles and the whole design stage is critical, particularly around considering how you're building in impact, how you're building in telling the story of what we're doing in l and and what the organisation is doing. And to have those roles included makes so much sense. Uh, of course, building the whole learning transfer into the process is critical as well. And of course, if you build all those things in at the design stage, um, that is how it should be. And of course, the question is, those, those aren't necessarily individual people doing that a lot of those roles are tied up in maybe just one or two people um so i like that a lot and then ben betts's idea of the asset creator the curator the programmer they make so much sense in our world these days of where learning tech is so key i suspect in a lot of organizations elements of that are already taking place not with people with those specific roles but i guess people starting to adopt that sort of approach um, and of course, with technology being around us, things like mobile phones being so much more convenient to capture images, capture videos, make stuff, mobile learning. Um, I think the whole curation side is huge and I think um, we should be instilling that concept of sharing ideas within our organisations. Where are people finding resources from? Where are they finding ideas from? Where are they reading? What are they learning? Are they sharing that? There's so much that can be done on there. So... Um, a huge amount there really um, mm. so all in all some good stuff to be thinking about the question then we should be asking ourselves is look at those roles and look at how we have them being carried out at the moment we may not we're unlikely to have people with those specific titles in so many cases but I'm picking those roles are we even thinking about those are we even looking at those ideas with an organisation, let alone have we got people that we can use to help push that agenda along? There will be people out there that can do that, without a doubt, but we need to be thinking about it. We need to be planning that and being a bit proactive. So look at those job roles. Look at those um, L&D roles. They're not job roles as such. L&D roles. Look at them. Can you see them? Do you recognise them in your organisation? Um, if so, get building on them. If not, why not?